today I'm on the battlefield at Culloden Moor and behind me you can see a blue flag and there are a number of these flags that mark the line of the Jacobite forces against the government forces which are marked on the other side of the battlefield with red flags. The Battle of Culloden was the final confrontation of the Jacobite Rising on the 16th of April 1746. The Jacobite army of Charles Edward Stuart was decisively defeated by a British government force under Prince William Augustus, the Duke of Cumberland. The battle took place on Dromosi Moor near Inverness, that's here, Culloden Moor, and it was the last pitched battle fought on British soil. The last pitched battle fought upon this land. The Butcher of Cumberland in command, a Jacobite genocide to procure and a slaughter planned at Dromosi Moor. Charles Edward Stuart to Eriske came to reclaim the throne in his father's name. The gentle Lochiel did true fealty swear to a crusade sanctioned through fervent prayer. Persuading others to follow the cause, they marched through Scotland to thunderous applause. Not knowing what heaven or hell may bring, they declared and proclaimed James Stuart King. At Preston Plans, a fierce battle was won by Prince Charles Stuart, the true King's son. A French invasion would help to convince thousands of English to join with the Prince. The Jacobite army captured Carlisle and marched south through England mile after mile. Few English recruits would enlist or aid. News broke that France could no longer invade. Arriving at Derby, the council met and resolved at once to pause and reset. From Newcastle, George Wade's army set forth with 12,000 men. The butcher marched north. Betwixt two armies forced Prince Charles retreat northwards to Scotland, evading defeat. On Cumberland's birthday, aged 25, Bonnie Prince Charlie a plan did contrive. Attack at Nairn in the dark of the night, shunning the battle, eluding a fight. A pincer move would end Cumberland's force but Murray was slowed through thick Scottish gorse. Having marched and tramped through the shrub all night, his men returned for Culloden's grim fight. Prince Charles and his men gave up on the plan and trudged back to battle, man after man. Fatigued and weary, some slept on the way. Never reaching the battlefield that day, they waited for combat in snow and hail, deploying in line while hungry and frail. Prepared for the fearless charge of Divine, the Highlanders formed the first battle line. As Cumberland's troops arrived at the brawl, the weather turned fair and hail ceased to fall. Jacobite troops howled abuse at their foe, who marched like a river through ghostly snow. James Drummond on left, George Murray on right, John Drummond the centre and set to fight. Low country regiments drew up behind, facing government troops formed and aligned. 500 metres extended between, the doom of the Jacobite cause foreseen. With Cumberland's right exposed to attack, he moved the cavalry line from the back. The Jacobite troops protected their flank, moving battalions from Lord Gordon's rank. Murray moved forward, a major changement breaking the line which was not his intent. Glen Buckets of Perth moved to fill in the gap, reforming the line from Murray's mishap. The front line was strong, but the rear was weak. The reserve was lacking and prospects bleak. At one o'clock, Jacobites opened fire. Outmanned and outgunned, their chances were dire. Rival artillery moved to the fore valiantly vanquishing violence and gore. Prince Charles' command to advance was delayed. Hundreds of lives were the cost that they paid. When Jacobite lines were ordered to charge, the Cohorn mortars began to discharge. The canister shot snuffed Jacobite breath in sweeping arcs of destruction and death. To avoid the shot, they moved to the right as they faltered forward 
confronting the fight. Hard hit by volleys, a few reached their goal, where they fought hand to hand and soul to soul. The government army wheeled in behind, outflanked the Jacobite troops were confined. As they fired upon them five or six times, each volley diminished Jacobite lines. The bold Highland charge was feared and renowned, thus a drill was refined, a counter found. Redcoats would thrust at the man on his right to bypass the targ of the Highland might. Those bayonet wounds killed brave Highland men who never returned to families again. The Jacobite masses, wild and manic, fired back in haste in perilous panic. With hope to be free and courage to die, their shots proved fatal to their own ally. The Jacobite left, bogged down in the mire, were stalled and resorted to long-range fire. In total failure, they turned to retreat, pursued and slaughtered in utter defeat. The battle was lost, the Jacobites fled, with hundreds abandoned, wounded and dead. Government forces pursued and gave chase, slaughtering all in that god-awful place. A vast execution with dreams destroyed in this waste of life with all hope devoid.